Aviators, what's going on? It's Captain Gab with the flight of your life. I'm here in my hotel room in Helena, Montana, and I find it quite fitting to be talking about this topic today. We're talking about bird strikes. And it's quite ironic that I've been reading my book here about Sully. For those of you who don't know, this book is about a pilot who managed to safely land a fully packed Airbus A320 on the Hudson River after experiencing dual engine failure from a flock of Canadian geese that went into the engines and completely shut the engines down. So if you haven't read it, read the book and see the motion picture that's out as well. It's called Sully, all right? And it's played by Tom Hanks in the movie. Very, very, very good movie. Um, I mentioned in my vlog that when I met my wife, I took her on a date and we went and watched Sully. And then I told her that I'm a pilot and I'm gonna become an airline pilot one day. And I asked her what her thoughts were after watching that movie. She's still with me today, luckily. But it's also very fitting because when I departed Denver today, we almost had a bird strike and it's not uncommon. I mean, bird strikes occur every single day. On average, about like 20,000, I'm just reading it looking here, 25,000 bird strikes reported to the civil aviation uh, authorities between 1988 and 1992, all right? So just over a four year period. Um, so it's serious business and I've had a handful of near misses with birds before, both after departure, coming into land. I mean, that's typically where you're going to experience them. Birds don't fly up at 30,000 feet, so you're going to experience birds down low to the ground. That's where naturally they are sort of hanging about. Um, I've had a handful of actual bird strikes as well, not resulting in any damage luckily to the aircraft. I mean, I've gone and done my post-flight walk around after a suspected bird strike and found, unfortunately, blood on the leading edge of the wing and I found feathers. Yeah, that's a good one. I found feathers lodged in the main landing gear inside there from the previous flight crew that may have had that bird strike or maybe it just went unnoticed. And I've so yeah, I've discovered things like that. So it's a common occurrence and there are wildlife programs in place to help mitigate that but unfortunately birds are going to do what they want to do we're the ones that are flying in their airspace so we need to be vigilant and have very very good vision so that we can see things like birds i mean that's why you might see as a pilot you need to have really really good vision or you need to be a, have your vision corrected so that you can sight small things in the air that can possess um, the danger to ultimately damage your aircraft and affect you and your passengers. So today's scenario, luckily we were holding short of runway 34 left in Denver. Air traffic control had actually told us to line up and wait and then notified us that there is the potential for birds hovering around near the actual end of the runway. It was a pretty vague report. And at that time when air traffic control says something like that to you, your eyes are automatically then looking down the runway to the general vicinity of where that report is so that you can hopefully sight these birds. Fortunately enough, my captain, who has very, very good eyes, uh, he, he looked down and he could see them straight away. I then spotted them as well. And we decided as a crew to hold the takeoff until we felt comfortable um, to actually proceed taking off. Air traffic control had cleared us for takeoff. We told air traffic control that due to the birds, we would like to actually hold in position. So air traffic control canceled our takeoff clearance. We held in position and we watched these birds and these birds, they look like big hawks. They were flying close to the runway, actually hovering right over the middle of the runway. So very good call that we didn't commence the takeoff at that stage. And now it's just a waiting game from then. It's just waiting until those birds move off to a distance away from the runway that we feel safe enough that in the time it takes us to get to our rotate point down the runway where we actually rotate lift off the ground, we decide if those birds will be in that general area of our aircraft. So really it comes down to the responsibility of the pilot to make sure that we are ready for that. So we waited and waited and waited and we commenced our after we got a clearance, we were ready to go. We said we were ready. We got our takeoff clearance again, and we proceeded to take off. It was my leg, I was flying, and I called set thrust. We set the thrust, we called 80 knots, we checked out uh, both our airspeed indicators to ensure they're both accurate and reading the same. 
one of the parameters we look at as we're going down the runway, whether or not we're going to reject the actual takeoff. We reach V1, which is our decision speed. At that point, we have to commit to the takeoff beyond V1. Prior to V1, we will be able to reject the takeoff and still stop the aircraft within the remaining distance of the runway. So we had passed V1. And at that stage, you know, my eyes are just down the runway. I'm looking right down the runway while my captain is looking at the airspeed and calling out V1. He then calls out rotate. But at the same time, he's looking for these birds as well because they are getting closer and closer. And it just so happens that one decides to come back right over the middle point of the runway above which if we were to rotate at the rotate speed that was set, and commence to pitch up to 10 degrees of pitch attitude, which is the normal pitch attitude that we pitch the aircraft up to initially, we would have hit that bird. So when, we, when my captain called V uh, rotate, he said to me as well, just delay it a little bit. And I naturally, I'm not going to actually take off and go into a bird that I can see as well. So it was just a matter of wait, waiting a little longer. I applied a bit of back pressure just to get the nose of the aircraft up. And by that stage, the nose of the aircraft is at a position and then air speeds building up and up the aircraft will lift off the ground anyway it's a very shallow lift off because we're not rotating at the normal rate of rotation that we normally do which is about three degrees per second uh, up to that 10 degrees but it's all about managing the flight path of the aircraft so that we can avoid the bird so we managed to avoid the bird the bird flew over us and then we pitched up to our normal pitch position so that's just some of the thought process that went through it um, and yeah, and we got we got past the birds. I mean, but it could have been a potentially big issue, especially if we didn't see them. I mean, we could have ended up perhaps like Sully here with uh, ingesting birds into our engines and having our engines flame out, or, or even worse, catastroph catastrophically get damaged. And for us to be nothing more than a glider at that stage. So, you know, you look back at this and you assess the scenario and what you could have done better, or what you did well, and all in all, I think we did a really, really great job of managing that. I mean, it's difficult to say what the birds are going to do. Uh, when we commenced our takeoff, they were at a position where we felt that they weren't going to be uh, of, of problem to us. And yeah, so that's just how it is. Um, methods that the airport uses to control birds are they have uh, special... I guess speakers that send out a discrete frequency that is supposed to actually discourage birds from coming into the area. They can use pyrotechnics. Um, I've seen guys go out with shotguns and shoot up blank rounds to actually scare the birds away. Failing a lot of these methods though, I mean, the sometimes the only option left, if, if there's a really stubborn bird or whatnot, they have to actually use fatal force and, and actually shoot the bird, which is very, very sad. Um, when you, do have a, when you do have a bird strike, and I'm going to show you some footage now, back when I was in Darwin flying, I actually had a bird strike when I was flying my Piper Saratoga. Um, I was going to wait to put this footage up on a separate video, but I thought it's very fitting to do so now. So while you watch that, enjoy. Uh, and I'm just going to go over what the steps are. Basically, when you do have a wildlife uh, impact, whether it's a bird or a mammal, it doesn't really matter, you actually have to notify the wildlife services. You have to give them a call. If possible, you can try and get that bird and place it into a position. In this video, I obviously got that bird and I placed it into a position away from the actual runway. You don't want that dead carcass on the runway because all the other birds will flock around it, um, unfortunately, and that creates another big serious problem. And most of the time, birds, when they hear the aircraft coming, they fly away from the sound. In this case, unfortunately, that one bird, uh, as you can see, it decided to fly directly in the path of the aircraft and actually hit the, uh, the right hand side main gear. Um, luckily it didn't hit the wing or it didn't hit the propeller otherwise there would have been blood and guts everywhere. So it hit the actual main uh, wheel strut. So yeah, that's my first hand experience showing you an actual bird strike. And so I called up the wildlife services, told them the location, and told them basically uh, the type of bird and all that sort of stuff. And then later on they come and actually collect the bird and they do some analysis of it and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that, that's basically what happens. But um, yeah, these birds can pre uh, present a real, real big danger to us. So it's important that we have good vision so we can see them and avoid them. We do not want to hit wildlife. Um, and as far as we're concerned, we're up flying in their airspace. They have the right of way, just like a surfer if he's out surfing. I mean, sharks, it's their territory. No surfer wants to 
have a shark killed if it attacks them that's it's not fair i mean any uh anyone would wouldn't want that so same thing with birds and wildlife anyway i'm rambling on um a lot of my stuff i do is just freestyle i don't really write scripts and stuff like that i try to just make it genuine and, and all that so i hope you guys appreciate that at least but anyway yeah so i'm in my hotel room now all is good i've got 23 hours of layover here and then i just fly back to denver tomorrow with then my deadhead back to base looking forward to getting home i hope you guys are all well keeping safe out there and i hope you have a great day thanks for watching the flight of your life captain gab over and out.